In this presentation, we will calculate the bond price, explaining how this can be done using present value formulas within Excel. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. Page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Remember that the bonds is going to be a great tool for both accounting and finance to describe the present value calculation. So that's why it's going to be used oftentimes. It has two cash flows related to it. One's going to be the face amount of the bond that's going to be due at the end of the term of the bond. In our case, it's going to be two years, semi-annual or four time periods. And the other is the flow of interest. So bonds are a great example because they have the two types of present value problems that we need in one area. So even if you're not in an area where you're dealing with bonds all the time, they're still going to be used and useful to understand present value types of calculations. So here we've got the bond is going to have one cash flow of 100,000 at the end of four periods or two years. And we need to figure out what the present value is in order to price it back here at your at time period zero. And then we have these four payments in terms of the annuity, 4,000. And we need to take those and present value them. We could take each period and present value each payment and present value it. But the easier thing to do is to present value an annuity when it's applicable and present value the one amount when it's applicable. And therefore think of that about these as two basically separate cash flows that we're gonna have present value separately. So we can do this multiple different ways, and it just depends on what, uh, your, what tools you have and where you are in order to know how to do it. What you want to know is just that there's different tools to do it. Anytime someone uses a different tool, what are they doing? The same thing. <laughs> and, and when can you apply these tools and what's actually happening here? So that's what's actually happening. We're present valuing this information. We could do that with a formula. We could simplify this process by, by using a calculator or using Excel, as we'll do here or tables. It's all the same stuff uh, that we're doing. Just be aware of those different kinds of ways you may be asked to do it depending on what you're, where you are. If you're taking a test, typically they give you tables if it's an accounting test. If they're not as nice to you, <laughs> they'll make you do the math. If, they, if you're somewhere not taking a test, of course you'll have Excel, hopefully, or, uh, or a calculator to do this information. So the present value within Excel what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to do this two different ways. Uh, again, we're going to take the present value of the payment that's due at the end of the four four time periods or two years, and then we're going to present value the interest. So to do this, we're if we have Excel, we're just going to go to the formulas here. We're we're going to do this by by rather than just typing in the formula by going to this insert functions, which will give us a formula box. I'll make it a little bit uh, easier. Some descriptions. We're going to type in present value and then get present value. That's what we're looking for. If you type in present value, the entire word present value, then you'll still find the same formula. And that's going to be the present value formula as it explains down here. That's the one we want. So we're going to say, OK, and then we'll just enter our data here. And it'll give us some descriptions as we go through each of these down here. If we click into this item, it'll give us a description. But uh, we're just going to enter our data. So the rate is the first thing it asks for. We want to take the rate of 10% because we're looking at the market rate to present value this thing. And we're gonna divide it by two. So 0 0.01 or 0 0.1, 10% divided by two to get the uh, market rate for a semi-annual period. And then we're gonna take the number of payments, which is gonna be four, and that's gonna be the two years. And we're gonna pay every, two, every six months. So we'll take that and uh, multiply it times two to get four periods. So that's the confu most confusing thing here is we're, we're saying four periods, not four years, every six months. And therefore the yearly rate is not 10%, which is given, but 10% divided by two because it's a, a rate for every six months rate. And then we're gonna take uh, the future value. That's what this is. Now, 
The most confusing thing about this formula is that we use the same thing for an annuity and for a present value of one. But it's the difference between these two fields that we use. So we just kind of know on the annuity tables, when we looked at tables, we had different tables that we used. In Excel, we're going to say this number here represents payments, how many payments we make. So if it were an annuity, as we will see when we do the interest portion, we would put payments here. Uh, but in our case, we're only making one amount at the end of the time period, one payment in our case at the end of the time period. But we're really just trying to present value one amount. So in other words, we know the future amount. We know what we're gonna pay at the end of four time periods or two years, it's 100,000. That 100,000 is the future value because it's the actual dollar amount at the end of four time periods. So we call that the FV or the future value. So that's, this is what we have. Notice that this is a required field because it's highlighted, it seems like. So it looks a little, it's a little confusing to use this, whereas this is not highlighted and therefore you would think it would not be a required field. But in this case, because we're using the same kind of uh, box for Excel to do present value of an annuity or one, uh, these two are the most confusing components. So this is how we're, we're gonna do this. We're gonna assume the calculation, it actually does it for us down here. And that'll give us the idea, of course, that if there was nothing else going on, if we're paying out 100,000 at the end of the time period, and there was no interest, then we would expect to get uh, 82,270 now for a market, a fair market transaction. So that would be the 82,000. Now, if we hit OK here, you could type this just in Excel and it would look like this. It's worth going through here and, and looking at this uh, for Excel. It's equals present value. That'll be the formula and then brackets. And if we click on this item, it'll give us the rate, which we had 0.0, I mean, 0.1 divided by two or five percent and then comma just like it says here and then we're on here number of periods four and then two commas what, what is going on there that means that we're skipping over the payment remember we didn't have a payment so we could put a zero in there or just two commas that it's nothing and then we put the negative 100,000 that negative just to flip the sign that's the only reason you have a negative otherwise it would, it would result in a negative answer so it has a positive answer, it would be negative. Okay, so then we put the 100,000. That gives us the 82. Okay, so then we have the present value of the annuity, which is this form, this formula. We're gonna do that in Excel, same thing. We go to the same place. But this time we're gonna take the rate, same rate, 10% divided by two, same number of periods, four time periods. And then the amount that we're gonna pay is the 100,000 times 0.08, the stated rate on the bond, divided by two, because we're paying it every six months, that 4,000. That's how much we're gonna pay every six months. It's not the future value this time, it's an annuity payment, it stands for payment. So we're gonna pay that each of those four time periods. That's what this is saying. There is no, we don't need the future value or the type. So this is the trick between these two. This is the trick and knowing that the number of payments does not mean years, but payments, and knowing that the rate has to be the rate per period, not per year. Then we're gonna say, okay, and then this will be our, our present value formula here. It's gonna get us the 14,184, which makes sense because we're gonna pay 4,000 four times, which would be 16,000. If we present value it, we expect an amount greater than 4,000, less than 16,000. If we see the formula in this format, we got present value times the rate, 0.1 divided by two. And then we've got the number of periods, four. And then the payments we have this time, 4,000. We don't have any future value or any type not needed. And that's what gives us our, our calculation. So if we add up our components, then we've got the present value of the 100,000, 82,270, the present value of the payments, 14,184 or present value uh, 96,454. Now we're gonna do this one other way that you could easily do in Excel just to give us a better idea of what's happening here. We could try to present value each time period, which is an easy thing to do when using formulas in Excel. And it's, it's gonna be something that hopefully makes it uh, look a little bit different, be able to see things from a different angle. So we're gonna put the number of periods here and we're gonna try to say what's the cash flow happening and then present value each time period and you'll see we'll get to the same result here. So we're gonna say that uh, the bonds in period one at the end of the first year, uh, there's, there's no cash flow happening. 
The interest, however, at the end of period one, we're gonna pay 4,000. Now the period one is every six months. So after six months, after the first period, we're not paying back the bond, we are paying interest. So the total, zero plus 4,000 is 4,000. Now if we were to present value just this 4,000, not doing an annuity, but just present value each time period. At the end of six months, we use the present value formula to present value one at the end of this time period, and we would bring that, that would be worth 3,810. If we did that for period two, six months later, one year later now, we'd say the bond still, we're not gonna pay back any bond, no cash flow there. We are gonna pay 4,000 at the end of, of year two again. And that means that the total, zero plus 4,000 is 4,000. If we were to present value this 4,000 at the end of one year or two six month time periods, it would only be worth 3,628. This is easy to do with, with a formula in Excel. So, and then if we go in, in three, and it's the same for, formula, it's the present value formula. We can copy it down. We don't even have to type it in there again. And then we've got the bond. We pay another 4,000, so the total, zero plus 4,000, but this 4,000 at three years, or a year and a half, <laughs> at three time periods, or a year and a half, it's only worth 3,455. So of course the value is going down as the time period increases from time zero where we're at now. And then period four, now we're gonna pay back the bond because that's the end of two years. 100,000 is gonna be paid back plus we're paying that 4,000 of interest that we pay every six months. So total then 104,000. If we, if we present value this whole 104,000, which is four time periods out or uh, two years, it's only worth 85,561. So if we sum this up then, we're gonna say the cash flow is 100,000 that we're gonna pay back at the end of the bond, 16,000 that we're gonna pay in interest in dollars, a total of 116, which could be calculated here or here to get that 116. And then the present value, however, is the 3,810 plus the 3,628, the 3,455, the 85, uh, 561 or that 60 or that 96,545. This is often a useful way to see it in Excel, easy to do in Excel. When doing things by hand, however, you'll note it's more tedious for us to present value each year. It's easier for us to present value the annuity portion using an annuity table and then present value the bond portion that's going to be due at the end of the time period separately and then add them together. If you're using Excel, this is nice because you get to see uh, the cash flow on a yearly basis and present value on uh, a yearly basis. So again, the, the transaction is just going to be cash is going to go up. When we record this, we're going to sell it for uh, 96,454. The bond goes on the books for the 100,000. The discount is the difference, 3,546. Cash is increasing. Bond on the books. Discount carrying value, 100,000 minus the discount.